What is the depth of a shadow? Imagine a bright sunny day where you see you in your shadow. When the sun shines against you, a three-dimensional being, what you get is a less detailed version of yourself. What remains on the ground is a 2D representation of yourself relative to the light source. It turned your 3D self into a 2D image. Your shadow has length and width, but it doesn't contain any height or depth like your 3D self. So we see that reflections consist of a version of the main target, but with one less dimension. So what would the reflection look like of a two-dimensional being? A shadow of a shadow, per se. And would humans even be able to see this reflection? Okay, let's start off by pretending that we're a two-dimensional being in a two-dimensional world. In this world, there is only forward, backward, left and right movement. Height isn't accessible in this world because it's two-dimensional. Now imagine the light shines onto this 2D figure and a reflection is casted in front of it. What would this dimension look like? To all three-dimensional beings, the reflection would be impossible to see. Since the main target is 2D and has no depth, the casted reflection would be of the height of the target as well as the depth of the target. Like we said before, the depth of a 2D target is always going to be zero. Not even zero, it's impossible, it doesn't exist. To us, the reflection would be completely invisible because the depth of the shadow would be infinitely small. However, it would make sense that a two-dimensional beam, or even a one-dimensional beam, would be able to see that reflection. I say that because humans, which are three-dimensional, can see three dimensions as well as two dimensions. If this rule is true and consistent, that would mean that a beam of X dimension per se is only limited to fully visualize their current dimension as well as partially visualize the dimension below their current. Any dimension below or above that range would be insanely difficult, if impossible, to comprehend due to the limitations of our dimensional confounds. Now that we explored what reflections would look like in lower dimensions, let's try to explore a more complex series of visualizations. Reflections of four-dimensional objects. The plane of this existence where these objects arrive from is called hyperspace. And in this case, the object chosen to be reflected in the fourth dimension is called a hypercube, also famously known as a tesseract. Before we try and visualize a tesseract, let's immerse ourselves in the previous dimensions so we can get a sense of understanding of what's going on. Imagine, Imagine a zero-dimensional zero point. point. It has, it has no, no length, length, width, or height, and by itself, itself it is non-existent. Non now, now, let's, let's add, add another, another point, point to the plane. plane. With these two zero-dimensional points, we've set the bounds and are ready to elevate to the first dimension. And this idea of being bounded by two zero-dimensional points is going to be super important as it's going to be part of a pattern that we'll explore later on. We're now in the first dimension. There is only length that can be seen. There is no such thing as width, height, time, or any other dimensions above us. In the world of a one-dimensional being, relative to us, nothing can be seen or visualized. But to a one-dimensional being, everything seems normal, and it seems like nothing's missing. It seems perfect. But to us, obviously, it's only a void of nothingness. Now let's get ready to travel to the next dimension. We need to prepare the balance for the dimensional transformation like we did for the zeroth dimension. To transcend to the second dimension, we're going to need four one-dimensional lines, and compare this to the two zero-dimensional points that was needed earlier. We're going to form that into a square, and transform that to the second dimension. We've successfully transcended to the second dimension. As a two-dimensional being, you can visualize and see lines with infinitely small depth. There is no height in this dimension. Now let's once again try to visualize what the reflection of this two-dimensional object would look like. To the two-dimensional being, it would look like a line with infinitely small thickness. This is a one-dimensional line. To a three-dimensional being, this reflection is invisible. But to a two-dimensional being, this line is just as visible as a two-dimensional square is visible to us. This pattern is that beings can fully comprehend objects in their dimension but only partially comprehend objects in their previous dimension. Let's start getting ready for the third dimension. We've seen that to transcend dimensions, shapes need the proper building materials. To enter the first dimension, we needed two zero-dimensional bounds. 
and to enter the second dimension we needed four one-dimensional bounds. Can you guess what we need to transcend this 2D square to the third dimension? Alright, to enter the third dimension, we're going to need six two-dimensional bounds to construct the cube. We've successfully entered the third dimension. Everything here is natural to us. And if we take a look at the shadow of the cube, we would see a vision of our two-dimensional building block. And if you've noticed, the reflections of these shapes always display the main building block that constructs the object. A cube is made out of 2D squares, and that's what we see in the reflection. A 2D square is made up of one-dimensional lines, and when we shine a line against a 2D square, we see a one-dimensional line. This pattern is going to be super important when you try to visualize a reflection in the fourth dimension. In fact, let's explore this fourth dimension right now. This journey is going to be super abstract, so enter with an open mind. By determining the pattern of the construction of the previous dimensions, we can determine theoretically what is needed to bound this fourth dimensional object. Eight three-dimensional objects is required to build this hypercube. It's impossible to visualize this object in four dimensions because we're bounded by three dimensions and trying to depict a 4D structure on a two-dimensional screen. Nonetheless, the ascension must occur. Welcome to the fourth dimension. In this dimension, length, width, and height aren't the only dimensions. Just as we can visualize a 3D object to be made of an infinite amount of two-dimensional objects, this hypercube is made of infinite amounts of 3D structures. Now imagine there's a light source that shines onto the hypercube that projects a reflection onto the ground in this hyperspace. Like in the previous reflections, we saw that the projection of the structures always consisted of the building blocks that built up the structure. This means that the reflection of a fourth dimensional hypercube would be a three dimensional cube. In this dimension, mere reflections of objects would spawn real three-dimensional objects with mass. And this is just a fourth dimension. Mass is exposed and then instantly faded away to thin air once the reflection goes away, once the light source stops shining on the fourth dimensional object. And this spawns a multitude of questions. Are we just reflections of fourth dimensional objects in our world? And this is just the beginning of understanding higher dimensions. Stay tuned for part two. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.